No one wants to be in an accident. That's why we take so many precautions. We wear personal protective equipment and carefully select each piece of apparatus that we use. But accidents do happen, no matter how many precautions we take. When they do, quick action is imperative, and a safety shower or eye wash can be a godsend. There are several types of safety showers and eye wash stations. The best are simple. With one movement, the water starts to flow. The stream continues until a second movement is made to turn it off. The flow of water in a safety shower must be strong enough to immediately drench the victim. The unit should also provide enough water for at least 15 minutes of continuous use. Eye washes need to produce a soft stream or spray of aerated water. This should also last for at least 15 minutes. Showers and eye washes should be located wherever corrosive, infectious, or other hazardous substances exist. Corrosives can be especially harmful. They can often cause severe damage to the skin and eyes. Corrosives include strong acids and bases and both dehydrating and oxidizing agents. Nitric acid, for instance, produces a slow healing, painful burn. Potassium hydroxide, a base, can inflict severe damage to the eyes. Of course, when you're working with these types of substances, you should always wear personal protective equipment. You should also read the substance's safety data sheets. These will tell you each substance's ingredients, properties, and hazards. Your facility's chemical hygiene plan will often provide additional information on the safe use of the chemicals. No matter how safe you think you are, you should know the locations of the safety showers and eye washes in your area and how to use them. In fact, you should know how to find them with your eyes closed. It's important to make it easy for any victim to reach the showers and eye washes in your labs. Keep access routes free of equipment and supplies. Shower areas themselves must also remain clear. The equipment should be routinely tested to make sure it's kept in peak condition. Accreditation agencies such as CAP and JCAHO require that showers and eye washes be stress tested periodically. Your supervisor or safety manager will put together a schedule. Showers and eye washes must function properly at all times. The water should be checked to make sure it's potable, not stagnant. Results of the testing should be marked on a tag, dated and initialed. If you're splashed by a hazardous substance, don't panic. Call out for help and get to a shower or eye wash depending on the extent of the splash. If you find yourself helping with a victim, take charge. Make sure they are completely drenched. It usually requires two helpers to handle everything. Clothing should be soaked all the way through. Remove all personal protective equipment. Take special care with safety glasses and goggles. The victim's clothing should be removed to at least the underwear. This is no time for modesty. Don't forget to remove their shoes as well. If there isn't a retention basin under the shower, the wastewater should be surrounded with absorbent material. This will help to prevent the spread of contamination. After the initial deluge, the victim can move to a restroom or locker room to continue the shower. The victim should then remove the rest of their clothing. The entire showering time should be no less than 15 minutes. Anyone helping the victim may also be at risk. They will inevitably get wet, and while the shower dilutes the chemical that they're exposed to, they may also need to decontaminate. Disposal of the shower water can often be an issue. In some situations, the water will need to be disposed of as chemical waste. This is especially true if the spilled substance is radioactive. 
Stripped off clothing should be decontaminated prior to normal laundering. If the spilled substance is particularly hazardous, the clothing should be disposed of. If there's a drain under the shower, you must know whether it empties into a storage tank or the sewer. If it's the sewer, your supervisor may need to alert outside agencies. And remember, if a shower does have a drain, water should be kept in the trap at all times. This will keep sewer gases from seeping up into the room. These gases can be both flammable and toxic. If a chemical splashes into your eyes, an eye wash is what you should use. As we've said, it should provide a gentle, continuous stream of aerated water. You must get to the eye wash as quickly as possible. Hold the affected eye open with your fingers to get a complete rinse, both under and behind the eyelid. If only one eye was splashed, do not allow the water to transfer the contamination to the other eye. Once again, wash the area for at least 15 minutes. The eye may feel better before then, but the damaging effects of many chemicals are sometimes slow acting. Some portable eye wash units don't supply 15 minutes of water, so they can only be used for a quick initial wash. The victim will still need a complete 15 minute rinse. Most handheld drench hoses require constant hand pressure to operate. This doesn't allow both hands to be free for manipulating the injured eye, so a drench hose shouldn't be used as an eye wash. Small eye wash bottles should only be used when there is absolutely nothing else. Then the victim will need to get to another source of water immediately. Remember, safety showers and eye washes are emergency equipment. After they're used, the victim should get immediate medical attention. And all uses of showers and eye washes must be reported to your supervisor. Safety showers and eye washes are as fundamental to the laboratory as hoods and pipettes. And you need to know how to use them in case of an emergency. Let's review. Know the locations of the safety showers and eye washes in your laboratory. Keep routes to showers and eye washes clear. Know what steps to take if a chemical splash does occur. And get splash victims medical attention immediately. By keeping your lab safety showers and eye washes in good shape and knowing how to use them, you may be able to prevent a serious injury, even save someone's eyesight.